We talk about how well the Indian community is doing. Um, politicians like to use government statistics. They like to, you know, throw out little figures and facts. They like to say that um, the Indian community, you're doing very, very well. Um, your wealth ownership, your household income is higher even than the Bumiputra and the Malays. That is true statistically, but then again, we all know that statistics only tell us um, what we want to see and there's a lot of layers of statistics that we can actually uh, look into. If you look at the entire Indian community, um, you have a lot of people who are earning very high income levels, but if you take away the top layer, for example, the first name that you would think of is Ananda Krishnan, who is you know, the richest person in the country. If you take him out of the picture, you take um, the other top individuals who are earning big bucks out of the picture, then what are you left with actually? This, this is the core that we're interested in. This makes up the bulk of the Indian community in the country. Yeah, I mean, at, at the root of it, we, we, have, we have the problem of the NEP. Let's, let's be frank, okay? It, it starts with the NEP, alright? And the NEP, if we look at the purpose of the NEP, it, it, it really wasn't meant to, to be used to this extent. Um, it, 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 was a, it was really a, a, a tool to, to raise uh, the Malay economic standing, but surely not to the, ex to the expense of others, and especially others who are equally poor. I don't think that was the original intention of the NEP. When the NEP started, I think a lot of people were genuine about wanting to use the policy to help all Malaysians. So in fact, the two thrusts was to number one, um, eradicate poverty regardless of race. And the second one was to um, eliminate the job function with race, identification of job function with race, um, which, you know, by themselves sound very, very ideal and nobody would dispute wanting to achieve these two objectives. Now the question to ask is, are these still relevant policies when we have a large professional booming project community um, at the beginning, it made sense because that, that was a community to be helped. Now, we've progressed so far, we might actually think of revising some of the objectives and the strategies to that end. We no longer need to classify things according to race. Um, many people have already been saying that if we want to have affirmative action policies, then it should be granted on the basis of um, need and meritocracy. And I think that would be a better way of living up to the original objective of the NEP. The recent uh, emphasis on concepts like the Tuanan Melayu and the arrogance which comes with such concepts, okay? And this arrogance is, uh, of Ketuanan Melayu is unfortunately totally interlinked with Ketuanan Islam although that term is not used, right? And you have cases like Rivati, you have cases like Shamala, you have cases like Murti, uh, all affecting the Indian community, all feeling extremely downtrodden, all ex feeling extremely victimized by Islamic authorities. I think it started off with the uh, death of uh, Murti, you know, the former Everest hero. And uh, when he died in December 2005, uh, 2005 when he died it was a sudden thing and uh, people were shocked uh, when uh, the body was claimed by the Jabatan Agama Vilay Paskatuan. They went to court and uh, the body was kept in the mortuary and finally the court uh, decided that uh, the Sharia court is recognized for that part and the body was taken and buried. So the public, Hindu public was very concerned, very agitated and they, the second day uh, after Murti died, they had a meeting uh, uh, to see what can be done, organization, the Hindu bodies, Hindu bodies, uh, all many organizations were involved and uh, it was known as an action committee at that time uh, uh, yeah, to uh, find relief for the family of Moti and also to continue with the case appeal and so on. However, as uh, it went on further, 
There were one or two other cases where such claiming of bodies came in. There were some incidents of temple demolition. So again it was brought to this action committee and that's how this committee became active and uh, eventually they opened up a website. And uh, so as uh, problems became more and more, then uh, while this website was uh, open and uh, more and more people showed interest and then it became Hindra. You see? Both the Hindra, which became later Hindra because of numerous issues of breaking of temples. Other issues on the uh, conversion, the judiciary seems to be highlighting on the Sharia law and 1211A rather than Article 11 and other relevant parts of the constitution. You see, we are not against anyone becoming a Muslim and practicing as a Muslim. That is their privilege and constitutional right. But we are more concerned with these people who, without anyone's knowledge, with just a little angst with nature, is claimed to be, and they never practice as Muslims anywhere at any time. You see? So this was the thing. And Hindra became more and more involved in other issues. They were always meeting in uh, in Bangsa, Jalan Bangsa, in an uh, office called the Malaysian Indian News Council. But it was all done with good intention. But later as this became bigger involvement in 2007, that is where Udaya Kumar became more and more involved. See? And Veda Muti, to the best of my knowledge, I have known him for a long time. But they are both brothers. And uh, I know both of them. Both of them are very sincere people, you see. But uh, especially Udaya Kumar is a fighter for Indian, Indian, uh, can call him an Indian activist. Always, you know, prisoners in, uh, you know, peculiarly only Indian prisoners are assaulted and, and the body was missing in the river. All these things became, and uh, so Udaya Kumar uh, being an activist, he was uh, fighting for this and always going to the, places where there was accusation saying that uh, uh, and this I think has been confirmed lately by human rights uh, Suakam Dr. Siva Subramaniam where he has visited many of these centers and found that uh, the complaints by the Indian prisoners or Indian captives uh, you know that they have not been treated well they have been treated very harshly and all that so whether it is true or not it's up to you know, uh, so I think Udaya Kumar uh, was always on that line, you see. Apakah keperluan? What is the necessity of shooting him? Nyawa, sekarang istri dia ada empat orang anak. Tengok semua anak perempuan. Empat orang anak perempuan, enam orang anak. Ini adalah satu perbuatan jenayah oleh pihak polis sendiri.